ओके अस्सलाम वालेकुम एवरीवन होप यू आर डूइंग वेल सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन क्वेश्चन नंबर 5 ऑफ ए2 इकोनॉमिक्स माइक्रो ए2 माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स फॉर जून 2023 2024 एग्जाम सीरीज एंड दिस इज बेसिकली द गेस्ट पेपर और एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन पेपर एंड अगेन बिफोर वाचिंग द एंटायर वीडियो आई सजेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू रीड दिस disclaimer as well okay so keep in mind uh, this guest paper or expectation is just for the preparation purpose and there is no confirmation or uh, guarantee that these questions will come exactly as it is in the exam however these questions may be tested as per my opinion and my past experience so uh, you should practice these questions a little more and now moving to question number 5 question number 5 says assess whether the law of diminishing marginal utility is the best way to explain how consumers maximize their utility okay again uh, keep in mind sometimes students give very good knowledge but still they don't get good marks because they ignore other objectives assessment objectives that are set by the cambridge university or they may make make mistakes in uh, graphs right so when you make wrong graphs you don't label them properly or you label them incorrectly then you cannot get good marks right so such answers can get like maximum 8 to 9 marks uh, out of 20 if graph is not correct or all assessment objectives are not basically catered Okay, so now moving to uh, the answer. Okay, how to answer this question? So first of all, uh, you have to give assessment objective one, that is knowledge, and then assessment objective two, that is analysis, and then assessment objective three, that is evaluation. Assessment objective one and two collectively carry fourteen marks, and assessment objective three carries six marks. So this is how total twenty marks. are divided among different assessment objectives so for assessment objective 1 you have to give the knowledge you have to identify the basic terms economic terms that are given in this statement of question and sometimes you have to give some background knowledge as well whenever required right so it depends on, upon the nature of the question and then you have to analyze the given situation that is basically asked by the examiner and then in evaluation part you have to negate whatever you have said in assessment objective 2 that is analysis part okay so officially move to uh, to the answer how to answer this question so first of all you should identify that utility is the main topic here that is tested so first of all define what utility is right so utility is the satisfaction that is derived by um, you you can start with a catchy like sentence you may say that law of diminishing marginal utility is an interesting law in microeconomics that explains the behavior of consumer and how he decides to consume a certain product or not and utility the term utility refers to the whatever i'm speaking is the entire answer you can just copy that so utility is the satisfaction that is obtained by using a certain product or service and then marginal utility is the additional utility that we obtain by using one additional unit of a product and you can give formula of marginal utility as well marginal utility is equal to change in total utility divided by change in quantity consumed and then you have to uh, define another economic term uh, relevant to utility that is total utility so total utility is the total satisfaction that is obtained by using a certain quantity of a product suppose you consume first unit of a product then marginal utility of first unit plus marginal utility of second unit and so on you will keep adding marginal utilities of each good each unit consumed so this is uh, like total utility and another uh, thing that is the part of knowledge is law of diminishing marginal utility 
diminishing marginal utility. So, you will have to define what law of diminishing marginal utility states. So, law of diminishing marginal utility uh, states that when a consumer continuously consumes a certain product, then the marginal utility of each additional unit consumed goes on to diminish or decrease. So, this is the basic def if all other factors are kept constant. So, this is the basic definition of law of diminishing marginal utility and here your knowledge part is completed. right? So, now you have to move to the analysis part. For analysis, you can give example and then you can draw a table uh, or you uh, as well as you can draw a graph as well. So, give example you can uh, give the example of glass of water for example, if a consumer uh, who is thirsty like drinks first glass of water then he gets a marginal utility on the second glass of water his marginal utility decreases as compared to the previous unit and so on and so forth. <coughs> so, I can write like glass of water here glasses of water and this is marginal utility and this is total utility. So, for example, if the consumer consumes first class of water, he gets satisfaction equal to 10 units and total utility will also be 10. On second unit, his marginal utility will decrease as compared to the first unit and total utility will be now 10 plus 8 is equal to 18. And on third unit, marginal utility will further fall from 8 to 6 and total utility will be now 18 plus 6, 18 plus 6 will give us 24. And on the fourth glass of water, his marginal utility further decreases and total utility will now become 28. 24 plus 4 is equal to 28. On the fifth glass of water, mar marginal utility further falls and now total utility will be 28 plus 2 equals 30. On sixth unit, marginal utility is 0, 30 plus 0 is equal to 30. And on the seventh glass of water, marginal utility is negative. So, 30 minus 2 is equal to 28. So, this is how you can make a basically table to explain the idea of uh, law of diminishing marginal utility. And now, you have to make the graph as well. So, first of all, you will have to draw the graph showing relationship between quantity of glass of water and marginal utility and then glass of water and total utility. right? So, let me make the graphs. If you look into these figures, then you can see as the quantity consumed continuously increases, marginal utility continuously falls. It reaches to 0 point when 6 unit is consumed and then it moves to the uh, like negative region. One important thing k when marginal utility is positive, total utility is continuously rising. When marginal utility is 0, total utility is maximum. When marginal utility is negative, total utility starts falling. So, you have to explain this. Uh, entire scenario that I was speaking here. Now, you have to make the graph and you will have to make two graphs and one graph for quantity consumed and total utility and the other graph for quantity consumed and marginal utility. So, this is the marginal utility curve which is negatively sloped and it reaches uh, to 0 at a certain point then moves to the negative region. So, this is marginal utility curve on x we have quantity and on y we have marginal utility. So, again on the upper graph we have quantity on x and total utility on y axis. So, when marginal utility reaches the 0 point quantity consumed is 6. So, on 6 unit marginal utility is 0. I am basically labeling 6 as per the above table. If you wish you can go back and see that. And when 6 unit is consumed, marginal utility is 0, while on the 6 unit consumed, total utility is maximized. So, on the 6 unit, total utility is maximized. right? So, after that, it will start falling. But what happens before that? Before that, it is continuously increasing and then it is maximum at this point before that it was rising and after that this point it is falling right so this is how you can make the diagram and on seventh unit marginal utility goes to the negative region this is negative region while total utility starts falling 
So you have to make this diagram and you have to explain the entire scenario that I was saying here. So marginal, you, you will say that initially marginal utility is decreasing but it is positive. So when marginal utility is positive, total utility is rising and when marginal utility is 0 on 6 unit consumed, total utility will be maximum and after that marginal utility moves to negative region and total utility starts falling. So this is the explanation of this graph. So this is, this is the analysis part, now you have to move to the evaluation part. In evaluation part, you will have to give assumptions and limitations of the law. You will say that assumptions and limitations, limitations of the analysis. So you will say that this law assumes that consumer should consume the product continuously otherwise this law will not be applicable. While in real life no one consumes a product continuously just to verify the law rather we use goods as per our need. For example, if we want to drink water we will drink it uh, as per the need instead of just keep drinking to uh, just prove this law. So this is like sometime something that is unrealistic because no one assume uh, no one is assumed to drink continuously or eat continuously or use same product continuously and then this law also assumes that product should remain the same like same product for example if you are eating apple then you should continue eating apple but in real life we don't do that we like sometimes uh, we uh, we may eat apple and along with that we may take some other food and maybe taking some soft drinks or maybe taking tea or anything else. So it's unnatural to use the same product continuously just to verify the law. And sim similarly this law also assumes that consumer's state of mind should remain the same. State of mind should remain the same. But in real life state of mind cannot remain the same because every second our state of mind is totally different from the last like last minute spend or last hour spend or last day spend. A few words said by someone may totally change our state of mind right sometimes someone may appreciate it. for example you were eating apple and someone appreciated you and said that eating apple is really healthy and help like uh, uh, very useful for you. So now your state of mind will change and you will eat another unit of apple with different state of mind. So you may feel more enjoyment and satisfaction than the previous unit. And similarly uh, sometimes uh, when you are like on the dining table ready to like eat dinner and you know that your favorite dishes are on the table and you are going to enjoy that. But suddenly like your parents or someone or friends may say that how was your result in midterm examinations and your examination result was not good. So suddenly you got disappointed from this statement and your state of mind totally changed. The food that was expected to give you a huge satisfaction does not have any more satisfaction for you so you may like even don't eat because your state of mind has changed. So state of mind like keeping it constant is again totally unrealistic then. And similarly this law is not applicable in case of hobbies for example if someone does something as, as a hobby he gets more satisfied doing same thing repeatedly. For example some people have like hobbies to play games, they keep playing the game entire night and they uh, they are not dissatisfied from that. So they every time they play the same game they are more satisfied as compared to the previous time. And similarly in case of knowledge this law is not applicable and unrealistic because when we talk about knowledge every additional bit of information that we obtain give us more satisfaction at, as compared to the previous knowledge piece of information or knowledge and similarly addictive goods in case of addictive goods like uh, addictive goods 
if the person keeps consuming the same product repeatedly he gets more satisfaction as compared to the previous uh, unit consumed so again this law is in, uh, not that much applicable so now you can suggest that uh, like although this is uh, a good theoretical like it provides a good theoretical base law of diminishing margin of utility however using indifference curve approach is seems uh, a little more more appropriate and more uh, like uh, useful an indifference curve approach uh, basically identifies the point where budget line is tangent to the indifference curve and that is the only point that gives maximum satisfaction to the consumer so instead of using law of diminishing margin utility indifference curve approach seems a little more realistic and it gives m more precise and uh, more comprehensive type of economic analysis so as per the indifference curve approach equilibrium takes place at e where consumer purchases x1 quantity of x good and y1 quantity of y good and this combination gives him the maximum level of satisfaction so instead of using law of diminishing margin utility indifference curve approach seems a little better and at the end you will have to conclude your answer and you will say in conclusion law of diminishing margin of utility is a good piece of uh, uh, information that provides basically or explains consumer behavior how consumers take decisions to buy something or not to buy something and based on the marginal utility they get from that product and uh, however this law of diminishing marginal utility is not that much realistic because in real life no one uh, basically tries to calculate marginal utilities before using a certain product or purchasing a certain product and similarly this law does not consider uh, incomes of the consumers it just consider if consumer is consuming a certain product because sometimes uh, the consumers income changes when income changes definitely something that that was giving more satisfaction may give a uh, less satisfaction or same satisfaction or maybe more satisfaction uh, as per the changes in income for example if income of a consumer increases then the existing product that he was using might not give him as as much satisfaction as um, earlier it was uh, giving him so uh, similarly if his income falls then he might not be able to purchase better quality products so previously he was getting better satisfaction as compared to the satisfaction now and um, you will also like suggest that indifference curve approach is a little better approach because it considers budget line or income of the consumer as well and his purchasing preferences as well and it identifies the point of equilibrium where consumer can consume two different goods instead of just focusing on one product that can get maximum satisfaction for the consumer so this is uh, the complete answer for this question i believe you understand that and you will be able to reproduce if it comes in the exam so i wish all of you best of luck and see you with the next video soon inshallah allah hafiz